Hello friends, welcome back to another lecture. Friends, ratio analysis is one topic which is not only important for GIB accounting paper, but it's also important for CIB ABM paper, certified credit professional examination or even practical banking. Now friends, I have already covered ratio analysis beautifully in depth in this video earlier and also in my ABM case studies course. So in this lecture, I will do a case study on ratio analysis and using this case study, I will explain the calculation of many important ratios and figures which are very important for your examination. So let's start. Now following data is from financial statement of Bhushan Limited for financial year 2021-2022. Now all this information is given. Now first information is revenue from operations that is net sales and the amount given is 51 lakhs 20 thousand. Then net profit after tax is 1 lakh 96 thousand 800. Then equity share capital is given as 16 lakhs. Then reserves and surplus is given as 3 lakhs 71 thousand 200. Then debentures are given as 12 lakhs 80 thousand. Then trade payables is given as 6 lakhs 11 thousand 200. Then provision for tax is 80,000. Then bank overdraft is 96,000. After this, fixed assets are given as 25 lakhs 58,400. Then inventories are given as 5 lakhs 29,600. Then trade receivables are given as 6 lakhs 50,570. And finally, cash and cash equivalents are given as 2 lakhs 19,830. The next one is an additional information is also given to you. That is average daily credit sales as rupees 31 lakhs 24,450. Now answer next 20 questions based on data given. And the first question is, what are current assets of the firm? And these options are given to you. Friends, I hope you all know what are current assets. In simple terms, current assets are the resources which a company owns and expects to convert it into cash during a financial year. Now, for a company, the current assets in the balance sheet can be calculated as that is current assets are cash plus cash equivalents plus inventory plus accounts receivable plus market securities plus prepaid expenses plus other liquid assets. Now for the given firm, current assets are simply inventories plus trade receivables plus cash and cash equivalents. And all these figures are given to us in the data. So current assets equals rupees 5 lakhs 29,600 plus 650,570 plus 2 lakhs 19,830. And on adding all these, we get rupees 14 lakh. Thus the correct option for the given question is option B. The next question is, what are current liabilities of the firm? And these options are given to you. Friends, current liabilities are considered as an organization's financial responsibility that is due within one year or during a basic operating cycle. Now, for a company, the current liability in the balance sheet can be calculated as that is current liabilities equals trade payables plus short-term loans plus current position of long-term loans plus notes payable plus prepaid revenues plus accrued expenses plus other short-term debts. So, as far as this firm is concerned, the current liabilities are trade payable plus provision for tax plus bank overdraft. Now all this data is also given to us as rupees 6 lakhs 11,200 plus 80,000 plus 96,000. And on adding these, we get current liabilities equals 787,200. Thus the correct option for the given question is option A. Now friends, before moving ahead, if you are preparing for GIB examination, then don't forget to get this GIB Accounting 1000 series question bank. Now this is a very special book which covers your accounting paper along with many case studies. What makes this book beneficial is that, that this comes with detailed explanations. Now friends, in accounting paper, if you are not getting detailed solution from your question bank, then please stay away from such materials. For accounting paper of GIB, you must have detailed explanations and that is what this book provides. Along with this, you will also get my support with respect to questions and case studies of the question bank. So if you face any issue in any question or case study, then you can simply mail your query to this email ID and I will help you with respect to that question. Lastly friends, don't forget to get updated edition only since I update all the books after every examination. All the links are there in description to this video, so order your hard copy today itself. 
so let's move forward with our mock test then next question is what are quick assets of the firm and these options are given to you friends quick assets refers to assets which are liquid in nature and can be easily converted into cash by liquidating the same in the market like fds liquid funds marketable securities bank balances etc and please note quick asset form essential component in the financial ratio analysis of the company to showcase strong working capital now friends there are two ways to calculate quick assets first method is that is quick assets equals current assets minus inventories minus prepaid expenses and second method is quick assets equals cash plus cash equivalents plus marketable securities plus accounts receivable now for the given firm let's find by first method that is quick assets equals current assets minus inventories now please note here prepaid expenses are not there so quick assets will be 14 lakh minus 5 lakhs 29600 which equals rupees 8 lakhs 70400 and then from second method quick assets can be found as trade receivables plus cash and cash equivalents which equals rupees 6 lakhs 50570 plus 219830 which equals rupees 8 lakhs 70400 so as you can see we are getting same figure by both the methods Therefore the correct option for the given question is option C. The next question is what is current ratio for the firm and these options are given to you. Now friends the current ratio also known as working capital ratio measures the capability of the business to meet its short term obligations that are due within a year. Now current ratio is simply calculated as current assets divided by current liabilities. Now please note we have already found current assets and current liabilities in previous parts. So current ratio will be simply rupees fourteen lakhs divided by seven lakh eighty seven thousand two hundred, which equals one point seven eight. So the correct option for the given question is option A. The next question is, what is asset to cash ratio for the firm? And these options are given to you. Friends, the quick ratio, also known as asset to cash ratio or liquid ratio, measures the ability of a business to pay its short-term liabilities by having assets that are readily convertible into cash. So, quick ratio can be found as quick assets divided by current liabilities, that is, current assets minus inventory minus prepaid expenses divided by current liabilities. So, let's put all these values. That is, current assets are rupees fourteen lakh. Inventory is five lakh twenty nine thousand six hundred, and please note there are no prepaid expenses here. And current liabilities we have already found in previous part that is seven lakh eighty seven thousand two hundred. And on solving this, we get quick ratio as one point one one. Therefore, the correct option for the given question is option B. The next question is, what are total assets for the firm? And these options are given to you. Now, friends, total asset will be simply current assets plus fixed assets. Now, current assets we have already found in previous part, and fixed assets are already given to us here. That is here. So, total asset will be simply rupees fourteen lakhs plus rupees twenty five lakh fifty eight thousand four hundred. That is rupees thirty nine lakhs fifty eight thousand four hundred. Therefore, the correct option for the given question is option D. Now friends before moving ahead if you are preparing for CIB examination then don't forget to get your CIB ABM 1000 series question bank now this is also a very special question bank first of all this covers your whole syllabus along with lots of case studies friends you will also get detailed explanations so that you won't have any issue in solving any question or case study given in the question bank now along with this you will also get my full support with respect to questions and case studies of the question bank So if you face any issue in any question or case study then you can simply mail your query to this email id and i will help you with respect to that question friends last but not the least always get updated editions since i update all the question banks after every examination now all the links are there in description to this video so order your hard copy today itself now let's move forward with our mock test and next question is what are long term funds of the company and these options are given to you friends long term funds in the data given are equity share capital plus reserves and surplus plus 6% debentures 
Now equity share capital is given to us as Rs. 16 lakhs. Then reserves and surplus are Rs. 3 lakhs 71,200. And debentures are given to us as Rs. 12 lakhs 80,000. And on totaling all these, we get long term funds as Rs. 32 lakhs 51,200. Thus, the correct option for the given question is option C. Then next question is. What are shareholders' funds for the company? And these options are given to you. Friends, shareholders' funds are simply equity share capital plus reserves and surplus, which are rupees 16 lakhs plus 3 lakhs 71,200, which equals rupees 19 lakhs 71,200. Thus, the correct option for the given question is option A. The next question is What is net profit ratio? And these options are given to you. Friends, net profit ratio, also known as profit margin or net profit margin ratio, is a financial ratio used to calculate the percentage of profit a company produces from its revenue from operations. Now, net profit ratio is simply calculated as net profit after tax divided by revenue from operations that is net sales multiplied by 100. Now, both these figures are given to us in the data. So, net profit ratio will be simply 1,96,800 divided by 51 lakhs 20,000 multiplied by 100, which equals 3.84%. Thus, the correct option for the given question is option A. The next question is, what is inventory turnover ratio for the company? And these options are given to you. Friends, inventory turnover ratio measures how fast the inventory is moving and generating sales. And it's simply calculated as Cost of revenue from operations divided by average inventory. Now, cost of revenue from operations is given here and average inventory is given here. Friends, please note an important point. When starting and ending inventories are not given and simply inventories are given to us in the question, then we take this as average inventories only. So, please remember this important point. So, inventory turnover ratio will be simply 51,20,000 divided by 5,29,600, which equals 9.67. Thus, the correct option for the given question is option C. The next question is, what is fixed asset turnover ratio for the company? And these options are given to you. Friends, fixed asset turnover ratio is in fact an efficiency ratio that indicates how well or efficiently a business uses fixed assets to generate sales. Now, it's simply calculated as revenue from operations that is net sales divided by fixed assets. Now, both these figures are given to us in the question that is here. So, fixed asset turnover ratio will be simply 51,20,000 divided by 25,58,400, which equals to so, the correct option for the given question is option D. The next question is, what is total capital employed by the company? And these options are given to you. Friends, please note total capital employed or long term funds are same. Now, in the given case study, long term funds are equity share capital plus reserves and surplus plus 6% debentures. So, total capital employed will be simply rupees 16 lakh plus 371,200 plus 12 lakhs 80,000, which equals rupees 32 lakhs 51,200. Therefore, the correct option for the given question is option C. The next question is, what is total assets turnover ratio? And these options are given to you. Friends, total assets turnover ratio is simply calculated as revenue from operations that is net sales divided by total assets, which equals rupees 51 lakhs 20,000, Divided by rupees 39,58,400 equals 1.29. Friends, please note revenue from operations is given to us in the data and total assets we have already found in one of the previous parts. Therefore, the correct option for the given question is option B. The next question is, what are long-term debts for the company? And these options are given to you. Friends, as you can see in the case study, total long-term debts are 6% debentures only and this amount is 12 lakhs 80,000. Therefore, the correct option for the given question is option B. Then next question is, what is debt to equity ratio for the company? And these options are given to you. 
फ्रेंड्स द डेट टू इक्विटी रेशियो ऑल्सो नोन एज डेट टू इक्विटी रेशियो रिस्क रेशियो और इवन गेयरिंग रेशियो इज बेसिकली लेवरेज रेशियो डेट कैलकुलेट अ वेट ऑफ लॉन्ग टर्म डेट एंड फाइनेंशियल लाइबिलिटीज अगेंस्ट टोटल शेयर होल्डर्स इक्विटी नाउ डेट टू इक्विटी रेशियो इज सिंपली कैलकुलेटेड एज लॉन्ग टर्म डेट डिवाइडेड बाई इक्विटी और शेयर होल्डर्स फंड फ्रेंड्स देर इज लॉट्स ऑफ डिबेट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस न्यू रेटर पार्ट मेनी एनालिस्ट यूज टोटल डेट फॉर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ डेट टू इक्विटी रेशियो while some other used long term debt only now please note in examination you may check your answer both ways but in confusion always mark debt to equity ratio using long term debt only since i have found that in your jib and cib examination examiner usually takes long term debt only so for this case study please note proprietors funds or shareholders funds we have already found in one of the previous parts that is rupees 19 71200 ,00, and long term debts are rupees 12 lakhs 80000 so debt to equity ratio will be simply 12 lakhs 80000 divided by 19 lakhs 71500 which equals 0.65 is to 1 therefore the correct option for the given question is option a then next question is what is proprietary ratio of the firm and these options are given to you Friends, proprietary ratio shows the extent to which total assets have been financed by proprietor, and it's calculated as proprietor's funds divided by total assets. Now, proprietor's funds or shareholders funds we have already found in one of the previous parts, that is nineteen lakh seventy one thousand two hundred. While total assets also we have found in one of the previous parts, that is rupees thirty nine lakh fifty eight thousand four hundred. So, proprietary ratio will be simply nineteen lakh seventy one thousand two hundred. Divided by thirty nine lakh fifty eight thousand four hundred, which equals zero point five zero. Therefore, the correct option for the given question is option C. The next question is, what is working capital for the firm? And these options are given to you. Friends, working capital is simply current assets minus current liabilities. Now we have already found both these, that is, current assets and current liabilities, in one of the previous parts. So working capital will be simply rupees fourteen lakhs minus rupees seven lakh eighty seven thousand two hundred, which equals rupees six lakhs twelve thousand eight hundred. Therefore, the correct option for the given question is option B. What is working capital turnover ratio? And these options are given to you. Friends, working capital turnover ratio is calculated as revenue from operations divided by working capital. Now revenue from operations is already given to us in the data that is here, and working capital we have found in previous question. So working capital turnover ratio will be simply fifty one lakh twenty thousand divided by six lakh twelve thousand eight hundred, which equals eight point three six. Thus the correct option for the given question is option D. Then next question is what is debt collection period, and these options are given to you. Friends, debt collection period is calculated as trade receivables divided by average credit sales multiplied by 365. Now, both these figures are given to us in the data that is here. So, debt collection period will be simply six lakh fifty thousand five hundred and seventy divided by thirty one lakh twenty four thousand four hundred and fifty multiplied by 365, which equals seventy six days. Thus, the correct option for the given question is option A. So friends finally we have reached the last question of our mock test and the question is what is the effect of current ratio if company declares a final dividend and these options are given to you Friends please note declaration of dividend will increase current liabilities but current assets will remain same thus the current ratio will decline in such a scenario thus the correct option for the given question is option A Friends with this I wind up this lecture I hope all the questions are clear to you Please revise this case study again and again before your examinations since many important ratios and terms are discussed here Last but not the least only practicing questions will make you clear your examination So get your 1000 series question mark from the links given in description to this video So thank you and I will meet you again in another lecture